What what was it that when you first got um, brought into a mental hospital? What was it about? Well, I had got hit in, uh, by a car, and the uh, the hood ornament went in my head, in my brains, and scrambled them. And I I used to be an A plus math student. I was just great in geometry. Oh my God, I loved geometry. I got straight A's. And uh, then, you know, I sort of fell apart after that. It took a long time to uh, heal from it. And, um, you know. Uh, the, How much did your personality change? Oh, it changed drastically. But, you know, you read all that stuff about uh, traumatic head injuries now because I, I do read a lot and talk to a lot of football players who have the same thing, and we, we do discuss it. Yeah, you change right away. Yeah. It's still you, but it's like a – it's kind of like an artificial – intelligence you do you find um that did you find that you became much more impulsive oh yeah yeah uh, you know what i well yeah here's what happened i was crossing the street on my way to school how old were you mm, i was 16 no i was 15 going to first uh week of high school and uh I was a big nerd. And anyway, I was crossing the street, and it was the top of a hill, and this woman, girl, she was on her way to the university, and the sun blinded her, and she ran me over. And uh, the rest is her street. <laughs> <sighs> how, how long were you in the hospital for? Mm-hmm. So first you Some must weeks. have been in, you must have been in a medical hospital first, and then you were mis admitted to a mental hospital afterwards. Well, there was about three months in between. Right. Uh, but I was in the hospital for a while, you know, and uh, I had a head concussion and a brain concussion, and I had hamburger meat for legs. So they did all these, um, what do they call them? Skin grafts on my legs, uh, and. Um, yeah, I was in there for a while. Then I came out of there, and I had forgotten everything about math when I returned to school, which is a matter of weeks after that, maybe two months. I, I'm really bad on time now. but uh, And uh, I had forgotten all my math, and it was just terrible. That was a big depressive depression I went into because I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember things, you know. And also I became way more impulsive. Then I was like, I don't know what I did. Then I started going really out there into the ethers. Mm. <laughs> I went way out there. Like how so? Way out. You know how you go way out. Do you ever go way out? Not really. I mean, oh. I've had a lot of head injuries. Oh, yeah. I've been, but not terrible. Mm -hmm. Mostly just punches and kicks. Nothing like car yeah. accidents yeah. or never played football. Yeah. But my head injuries have, you know, they were just more accumulative when I was young till I was about 21, 22, where I stopped, stopped fighting, stopped sparring. Mm -hmm. But nothing, but I, I definitely I'm subject to impulsive behavior. Still? But yeah, but I keep it under wraps. I keep it mm -hmm. under control because I'm aware of it. But when I was younger, I didn't understand mm -hmm. what was going on. I would just be subject to whims, very addictive behavior. But I tried to keep it positive, but I would be addicted to things, mm -hmm. addicted to doing things, addicted to um, games, addicted, like ridiculously addictive, like spend 10, 12, 14 hours a day playing video games. That, that kind sounds of shit. like my kid. Yeah. Well, <laughs> some of it's just normal because video games are awesome. But yeah. it would be, for me, it'd be everything, martial arts, pool, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I'd just be completely obsessed with it and be thinking about it all day mm -hmm. in a point where it wasn't necessarily healthy. Yeah. And just on a whim, I would just want to go do something. I just I almost had no control over compulsions. Mm -hmm. you know. And I think some of that is it, whatever brain injuries that I've had are very mild in comparison to a lot of people that I know. Certainly very mild in comparison to yours. And, but yeah, I, plus but I there was a lot of trauma in the state hospital that, you know, I'm like, <laughs> you know, being there and seeing and experiencing. And how long did they admit you for? I was in there for? nine months. <sighs> so what was it that they brought you in there for? What was, how were you behaving that they decided that you needed to be admitted? 
I was out there. <laughs> you, you say that, like, what yeah. does that mean? Um, I don't think there's any words the English you just, can understand. You didn't have a control of reality. You, you, you didn't have control of your behavior. Your thinking was screwed I, up. I was, you know, not thinking like the normal thing that they say you should be thinking about. And but people around you had realized it that it was it was so bad that they had to admit you to a hospital. It wasn't just that oh Roseanne she's eccentric. It was she needs actual medical help. Yeah, I asked to be admitted. You knew something was really wrong. Yeah, did I you, finally admitted it was. Did you know at the time? Were you completely aware that it was connected to your car accident? Uh, no. You just knew something was wrong. Yeah. And back then, they didn't really kind of understand that the way they understand it now. No, they didn't understand too much about bipolar disorder or they knew nothing about um, multiple personality disorder. Trauma related. Trauma as related. Well. Yeah. yeah. PTSD. Now they call everything PTS. Yeah. <clears throat> they don't even say D anymore. They say PTS. Mm. Post traumatic stress. So when they admitted you, what was the treatment? Like, what did they do to you when you were inside the mental hospital? Well, they right away put me on an antipsychotic. What was it? Do you remember? Melaril. And what did that do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there. <laughs> you weren't there. You were I gone. Went, uh -uh. I was gone. I was just watching these people I was in the mental institution with, and I wanted to tell that story. Yeah. Because there was this one lady... I think I told this to Paul Rubens, too. I think it might be where he got Large Marge. <laughs> but uh, there's this one lady, and she's in this cage, you know. She's in a cage with keys on our ward there. And, uh, uh, Christ, I can't remember her name either. Uh, Marge. Her name was Marge. Yeah. And she's about 600, 700 pounds. Whoa. And uh, she's funnier than hell. You know, I thought, man, this, this chick's got some good lines. You know, and I traded lines with her, and she'd laugh. You know, you, you know, I always like jokes. You can always find a joke wherever you are, you know. That's the key to life, I think. But, um, so, she, oh, everybody called me Chunky. That was my name. Chunky. <laughs> and uh, there was another girl in there named Shorty. So it was Chunky and Shorty. We were like a duo. <laughs> But anyway, um, so she's like, hey, Roseanne, get what's-her-name's keys when they go to dinner and open this up here and, you know, come in here. I'm like, okay, you know, because, you know, after all, I was crazy, too. And uh, <clears throat> I trust, I don't know, I, I just always, I never questioned that there was danger anywhere. I always got in trouble, you know, caught, beat up, something, you know. But... uh so I did it, you know, and I can't... Oh, Anka, that was her name, the head nurse. I hated her because she told me I needed to bathe. I'll tell that story later. <laughs> it was horrifying. It changed my life. But anyway, so they all go to dinner. So I go in there, steal the keys out of the thing where they are, you know, the attendants. And I go in there with Marge and <clears throat> leave the keys in the door and close the door. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, Marge, you know, <laughs> how's it going, Marge? <laughs> and she's like, Chunky, you know why they put me in this cage, don't you? Takes a drag over cigarette. I go, well, why? No, I don't know why. <sighs> well, Chunky, it's because they consider me to be dangerous. I'm like, how come? <laughs> I am. I'm like Gomer Pyle. Right. Seriously. I'm total Gomer Pyle. And you were Pyle. like 16 at the time? 15. About eight minutes into it, I realized, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Something's going on here. That's how long it always took me to like zero in on what's happening because I'm not even there. You know, I'm always ignoring when other people talk. I don't listen. You know, I'm thinking <laughs> of funny things. They bore right. me, you know. Yeah. 
So I'm always in my own head. I never get out, really, except for when I work. But uh, so uh, then it got, then it took a turn, you know, she's like, <clears throat> so it got to, uh, why do they consider you dangerous? You know, I had to ask it because she kept on getting me there to that point. Well, she wanted me to ask it. I was trying to delay it, you know, because I knew they'd be back in 40 minutes and it was like going on 20 now. She goes, I'm in here because, that's my voice I got to do with Marjorie. I'm in here because I broke a couple of tenants' backs. Didn't they tell you that? I'm like, no. <laughs> uh -uh. <clears throat> I'm like, how, how'd you do that? And in my head, I'm thinking, don't change. Don't miss a beat. Don't miss a breath. Don't look nowhere. Just to keep on acting all, you know, Utah. Utah girl. Because you knew she was dangerous. Well, that's when it, it hit my head that it was, uh-oh, she's talking about, you know, I'm, a, I'm feeling like prey. Right. You know. And uh, I go, how'd you do that? Because I figure, oh, it's an accident. You know, it's good old Marge. She tells good jokes. She goes, well, it's easy. You just, no, oh, I'm doing me again. I got to do her. It's easy. You just put one hand here and one hand here, and then you. I'm like, oh. Uh, where'd you learn that? I don't, I'm changing the subject. In How was your mom? What was the school like you went to? What's your favorite book? What's your favorite color? What kind of ice cream you like? You ever seen that there's worms in the oatmeal? You ever notice that? She started, got, that one got her. She's like, yeah, I did. I did notice they were crawling motherfuckers. I go, yeah, and they expect us to eat that? This, this, you know, I, I like suddenly I'm transported to a confederacy of dunces when he's on the thing against Levi Pants. <laughs> Remember that rant mm -hmm. in that book? So I'm just tap dancing, really. And uh, then I hear it click. Fuck, man. I grabbed, I, I got up, fumbled the keys out of the door, put them back in the uh, attendance room, went in my room. When you said you hear click. Yeah, I knew the first door got open. There was two doors. I heard the first door open. They're coming back from from dinner. So you got away I'm from I'm supposed her. to be sick, you know, in my room. Right. That's why I didn't go to dinner. Yeah, so I'm just laying there. And, and that was like daily. I mean, there were so many weird people in there. We had this one girl, Rosie, her name was, where she'd always grab, she always ended up with a pair of real sharp scissors and lunge for someone's throat. <laughs> we're like, we're, Where'd you get them? Who's bringing her them scissors? <laughs> you know. But anyway, I went on antipsychotic medicine, and um, that was good that I was on there for the shit I saw. Now, when you say anti, my friends hanging and stuff like that. You saw your friends hanging yeah. in in the mental institution. Yeah. So I saw worse than that. What'd you see? I I saw, you know, victims of abuse. It's terrible. By the guards. No, of kids coming, you know. Oh, victims of abuse that, that came in that were mentally scarred by yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when they put you on antipsychotics, was yeah. it because you were exhibiting psychotic behavior? Yeah. Or just, what, what kind of psychotic behavior? Well, they thought it was psychotic. I was just scared that they, I, I think I was throwing them off because I wanted to think I was psychotic. I didn't want to think them to think I was schizophrenic. I knew enough not to let them near me. That if, because once you got the uh, once you got the diagnosis of schizophrenic, they would, Electric you know, shock. do shocks and yeah. they'd experiment on you. Basically, you were in a guinea pig, and I didn't want that. Jesus. So maybe I, <clears throat> you know, and then you know, so yeah, I I was doing weird things like walking down the middle of streets after I hit by the car. I walked down the middle of streets. I don't know. I thought, oh, you got to get over your fear of crossing the streets. That's what was in my head. And then I'd walk down a highway, you know. Whoa. I was in a whole other realm. It was like a real surrealistic and metaphysical realm. And I, I grew comfortable there. But, you know, I think most artists, writers, and performers are in that world. I mean, we got a toe in it at least. 